exercise here is mm. the running behind. Mm. Let's start the next session. Bueno, comencemos la siguiente sesión, la sesión número 6. Y voy a pedir amablemente al técnico que no la muestre en la pantalla. Y tengo que encontrar mi pointer. Ok, data collection and measurement. That everyone came back from the break. I have to say, the coffee here is so good that yesterday I had too much. <laughs> and it seems a little bit stronger than the one we get in Poland, even if it's Colombian. So today I have to be careful. Anyways, uh, so we will be talking very briefly about identification of emission sources, data collection strategies, and we will have a, a practical exercise sample emission calculation, just very simple calculation. Once you do it once, you will know how to do it. And to, uh, the following session is the panel, and after the panel we have the game. And during the game you will be using the knowledge, amongst others, that you will gain during this, um, this, um, uh, this session. So, the general process of data collection is the following. First, we identify the sources, right? We look around what is using energy, what is using water, where do we have refrigerants, and so on. Um, uh, second is uh, we select calculation approach, which standard we want to um, uh, follow. We collect the data, we choose emission factors, we, we always write down the sources of emission factors and so on, references, of course, there are uh, factors uh, provided on different uh, levels. I will be talking a little bit more later on. Uh, we apply the calculation and consolidate the data um, 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 into a report. Uh, what are the typical uh, sources in a company? Uh, anything that is connected with combustion of fossil fuels, so stationary combustion, it would be boilers, heaters, and so on. Mobile, mobile co uh, combustion, it's uh, connected with transportation, typically cars, airplanes, ships, buses, forklifts. Uh, process emissions, so these are any um, production-related, process-related uh, activities um, from production lines and so on, whether these are uh, physical or chemical, Em, uh, emissions uh, connected with uh, chemical reactions, for example, um, uh, and it can be from production of aluminium, smelting, cement calcination, from production on, of products, you're just using, for example, electricity in the production line. And then there are also fugitive emissions, which are in general some kind of leakages, right? And uh, as I said, one of the worst leakages on the, let's say, company level, uh, very often might be leakages of refrigerants. But it can be also over-fertilization in an agriculture company, um, leakages from uh, uh, methane, gas pipes, um, and so on. We, once we know the sources, we, we uh, of course, define uh, um, align them to the scope one, two, uh, one and two, and uh, uh, three would be in the portfolio in your case, right? I think I don't have to repeat what scope one, two, and three is, hopefully. And then um, in the, what is it? This is the green, Greenhouse Gas Protocol. In Annex D, you will find um, a lot of guidance um, uh, on the sectors. So if you have an a company from a, a given sector, you can actually go to the Annex D. And the Annex is much longer than that. I just uh, copied uh, um, half of the page from the Annex to show you how it's constructed. So you have the subsector, you have uh, and you have scope one, two, and three. These are examples of uh, emission sources 
that are typical for this sector. This makes it easier for an in institution from this sector to actually define the emission uh, sources. Okay. I will not be going through these examples. Okay, uh, this is very sector specific. So, um, yeah. Um, again, you just do an inventory of of the of the um, uh, emission sources by activities. Um, so, uh, uh, for example, uh, um, uh, heating of the building. Uh, electricity consumption in the building, um, um, uh, use of cars in the company, uh, um, and so on. Then you uh, apply which scope it, it, it is, and then uh, align the measurement approach. I will be talking about the measurement approach in a second. And then you provide the uh, activity data uh, <coughs> Um, at the end of the day, of course, it needs to be provided in tons of CO2 equivalent per year. Yeah? And this way you build an inventory. And then you can, from this inventory, you can uh, create a report uh, sorted by scope, so sorted by um, um, the different types of activities and so on. If you have any issues with the, uh, defining the activities, defining the measurement approach, uh, looking into activity data, how to get them, remember about the guidance, um, the guidance notes, either if it's in ESO, in the annexes, or GHG protocols in the, uh, what they call publications, I believe, or, or annexes, um, or there are also different industry association data and other agencies that you could uh, possibly use as a source, although um, please be careful when you're using some uh, proxy data. And I would highly disadvise using any AI tools, um, you know, chat GPT and so on. It is well known from just lying or making up stuff. So you don't want to risk, right? So. Uh, be careful. Yeah. I, I was I was playing around a little bit with the chat GPT and asking questions that are easy 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 to Google out, and it was not providing the proper answers. So there's something wrong <laughs> with this with this tool, and uh, um, it might be useful for some particular application, but for sure for this is not good. We don't want to risk it. Uh, so different uh, uh, strategies. I mean, of course, you need to align the strategy to a particular scope. You know, scope one and two, as I said, from my point of view, is quite easy. Uh, typically, most of the data you will have in the accounting because there are invoices for the electricity, there are invoices for the natural gas, there are invoices for coal, for fuel used. Um, 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 and some, let's say, invoices for uh, maintenance of cooling technologies where you have a refilling of uh, refrigerants, right? So you, you can actually draw this, most of this data from uh, accounting, from the invoices. Then when it comes to uh, scope three, uh, when it when it's about the portfolio, then you need to kind of request your clients if they they are able to provide you with the emission data or uh, at least the activity data. So whether they are able to provide you with tons of CO2 or maybe kilowatt hours of electricity used, and then you can kind of aggregate the data. And then when it comes to different other scope three emissions, which might be connected with cars that you lease out you need to know how much kilometers uh, the employees did, right? When it comes to airplanes, uh, airplane travel, also you need to track the kilometers done by, by, by employees in the airplanes. Uh, when it comes to footprint of the products and sub-products you're using, you also need to ask your suppliers um, uh, for that. 
but for you as a financial institution, obviously the scope three emissions are mostly about uh, your portfolio and any travel related um, uh, activities. What are the data sources? Uh, so, um, of course, putting aside the, the, uh, the clients, right, of financial institutions, um, we also can use uh, national sources, national statistics. I use them very often, um, although in many countries where, where I had a pleasure to work, uh, the statistics um, are... Uh, not there or are kind of not pub, uh, published every year. Uh, so then we need to look into other resources like sectora, sectoral experts, uh, sector agencies. Um, in few occasions, I also went to a library to read a little bit, especially when it comes to agriculture, where I didn't have um, too much experience at the beginning. Um, there are also national uh, greenhouse gas inventories, which might be a source of, of good data. And of course, uh, national data that the country collects um, uh, for the um, um, United Nations Framework uh, Convention, right? Um, so there are kind of underlying documents that sometimes are published and they very often go into sector level uh, information and they are also a good source of uh, information. Uh, on the international level, ob obviously IPCC, Emission Factor da Database, there is a website. Uh, if you Google IPCC Emission Factor Database, you can enter and see emission factors uh, there. Um, there are also a very good source of data very often is the World Bank database uh, about uh, you know, uh, sector um, emission or energy intensity, for example. We, you can find it out in Europe. We, we use Eurostat very often. Um, also, International Energy Agency has a lot of publications that might be very helpful. OECD has a lot of data. FAO, which is food agriculture organization, uh, and sometimes there are some interesting documents from IMF that I also used uh, in, the, um, uh, in the past. And also the last resort, uh, some scientific papers, uh, but um, I found that uh, the donors um, uh, are getting more reluctant to base on a scientific paper that we read, right? Because um, this one paper might not be very objective. But it also happened that, uh, that I was using some scientific pa papers from some portals uh, that make it much easier to report. Uh, what if we uh, don't have the data? What if we, the client doesn't provide us with tons of CO2, um, for example? Then, of course, we need to use what's called surrogate or alternative uh, data. You need to remember that they mu must be relevant, they must be in line with good practice, and you need to document the source of it for the transparency and for the auditing. Because it might be the best piece of data if you don't have supporting documents, they are worthless, yeah? unfortunately. And sometimes, but it, this doesn't happen too often, to, to be honest, um, um, we just ask clients to do the measurement, for example, of electricity consumption of a particular asset, and then we have very good dat data, but this doesn't happen too often because it actually raises the costs uh, and, uh, and kind of it's uh, very often too much of a hassle. And again, when we talk about smaller, uh, smaller SMEs, this is hard to do, but if we go towards bigger companies, for example, we can actually expect them to do that. Very often the big companies have, uh, you know, uh, maintenance officers, engineers um, that are responsible for energy issues, for example, and then they are capable to do some measurements, right? 
Um, so when it comes to adapting the data, you need to remember that the, 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 the data should kind of be relevant and provide full coverage of this particular activity. They need to be consistent. They need to fill in the gap that is there. Um, and, um, uh, and you need to be kind of confident um, uh, about this data. Jonas yesterday mentioned greenwashing and green hashing, right? So I'm telling you, you need to be confident to the level of, you know, being reasonable, right? It's better, um, and you can always ask some experts, right, if these data are okay, and also verify your report that will support um, support this data, right? But uh, I wouldn't be... Um, if, if you do everything right, according to the protocols, according to the standards, you, do, you should not be scared to do the reporting, right? If you are transparent, you talked about the standards you use, assumptions you use, exclusions you used, you know, uh, maybe you mentioned uh, logic of not using some data and so on, then um, then it's better than not reporting. I, I really think that taking the first step makes you more comfortable with the situation and it will help you to take the, the, the next steps. When it comes to uh, measurement or data collection, there are different uh, ways, as I mentioned. So, of course, first is the direct measurement of um, of greenhouse gases, which doesn't happen too often only in big facilities, big production lines, big companies uh, do it on the level of particular uh, particular installations. I would I would say there are, there are no um, companies that actually measure all of their CO2 emissions across everything that they do. This, this is just impossible, right? They would have to put a measurement CO2 measurement device on the uh, tailpipe of the car even, right? So this doesn't happen. But on the level of uh, installations, this happens. And if you're providing finance uh, f to a big installation, uh, you could uh, possibly uh, kind of uh, ask them, especially when, it, when it's uh, concerning some fossil uh, burning, chemical processes and so on, it's possible to, to measure the uh, greenhouse gases from the exhaust gases. Uh, then stoichiometric uh, calculation, so if we know how much coal we add to the boiler, uh, we assume that the boiler has a certain efficiency, um, we can actually um, um, uh, calculate how much CO2 was emitted, and this is also a good way to do that. And then the most commonly used way is the estimation, so we know how much uh, kilowatt hours of electricity we used, and we use the git emission factor, and we get the CO2 emissions, right? And we can, we, I also mentioned about tons of steel produced, so the sector factors, and again, we can estimate the emissions. Emission factors. Yesterday we were talking about global warming potential. So again, when you're preparing the report, you need, to, you need to refer to this for clarity and you need to point out which one you used. The, and there are also emission factors uh, from, uh, amongst others, uh, IPPC that you can use uh, when it comes to different types of, uh, uh, especially, you know, uh, fuels, fossil fuels and so on. Um, and they talk about how much CO2 uh, comes from one kilogram, one uh, cubic meter of burning of a particular fuel. Okay. Emission factor hierarchy uh, method. So, of course, uh, we would like to use uh, location-based factors. Uh, so, when we talk about grid emission factor, um, um, in uh, Poland, where I live, or in Jordan, when I where I have a, one of the projects, we use one emission factor because, in general, the grid is kind of... Uh, there is one grid, basically, right? 
But I can imagine there are countries where the grid is not um, uh, not connected between different uh, regions. Uh, so these different regions might have different uh, 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 grid emission factors. Uh, some regions might have, for example, only fossil fuel energies. Some others might have renewable energy because there is a water dam, for example. So this uh, averaging out this emission factor would not be very fair and would would uh, kind of uh, lead to um, uh, under or overestimation of um, uh, CO2 emissions. But of course, using national production emission factors is also fine. And then if we, if we don't have it, and I did find some countries where you would, when, uh, where the emission factors uh, from the grid even are very old and the donor didn't agree to, to use them, then we need to use some market-based information and provide uh, the supporting uh, information uh, under that, and then we can report. How do we do the reporting? Yesterday someone was asking how the tool works. So this is the uh, this is the uh, very complicated equations that that are under the all the emission uh, calculation tools. So we have the activity data times emission factor. We get tons of emissions, and remember this might be different emissions: so CO2, methane, and so on. Then we take these tons of emissions, multiply them by global um, um, appropriate global warming potential, and we get the carbon dioxide equivalent of emissions. As I said, it's not really hard. As bankers, you can do that, right? The challenge is, is, is in getting this activity data, right? Are there any questions? If not, uh, we would have the group work. I would kindly ask uh, maybe Christine to support me in splitting somehow the group. We, I've foreseen uh, three groups, but we can have six groups, right? Somehow. It's a very short. Yeah, it's what very short, think? so maybe we make here to make it not too complicated. Group one, you are group two. Maybe you can uh, go here, then we have group four, uh, three, <laughs> so calculating. Then maybe you can make group four, and we make here group five, group six, and then we make here group seven, where you can maybe join. Okay, so group one, group three, group, uh, two, group two, group three. Group four, group five, group six, group seven. Have um, everyone saw it? <laughs> <laughs> you have the advantage. You can ask Mustafa for support, and you have. Oh no! Yeah. So okay. you will again take number group one. This is a very very simple calculation. Please don't be offended. <laughs> um, Write down the uh, data you need. I can go back to the uh, equations if you missed them. I remember one of them was tricky. <laughs> so just to maybe explain, so um, that the different groups have the different um, tasks here, yeah. and the uh, task you have to do is first to provide like the type methodology whether it's location based or market based then to calculate the steps and finally the co2 emission is it clear how many minutes five five three, five, five. Yes. This is the tricky one. <laughs> Wait.
it might be that there's a methane. But it's just, I have the solution, so. <laughs> Where? So, yes? Mm -hmm. Wait, because they are... Okay. Yes? Yes, yeah. Have to pen on everything on time. Okay, so is there, did everyone do calculation? For clarity, these were two separate equations, right? Two multiplications. And to, uh, t I, I want to say tomorrow, today we are playing a game which will be a little bit more co complicated than that. And we will use uh, the tool provided by the Greenhouse Gas Protocol, which you can download. And the tool is an Excel file, so that you can uh, see the Excel file, use it uh, uh, for a series of such calculations con concerning your organization. OK? Hello, hello. Okay. Okay. I hope you finished. No, wait. Sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs>
the rookie mistakes. <laughs> okay. First, we would like to hear the group uh, one, four, and seven about your outcomes. Now I need the paper. Okay. 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 What are the results of group one? Uh, point two three tons carbon equivalent. Okay. Then let's check what's the result. Oh, well, of let's listen to the fourth yeah, and exactly. seventh. What is the result of group number four? Also market based in two point. Okay. Zero point two. How much? Zero point. But you said. They said two point three. 0.23. Ah, okay. Okay, and the seven group? Sorry, I need to. <laughs> I'm half deaf. Two, what? One more time. So, point two three. I have to check. What? Yeah, okay. Okay, now the group uh, two, or are we? Uh, no, let's look into the solution. No, but you, they keep going. No, no, it's okay. different <laughs> slides. Okay, and of course I made a mistake. It's always fun when someone uh, that teaches makes a mistake. Exactly, he just made it for a thousand liters. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was overestimating the fuel consumption. <laughs> it was a long trip. Yeah, yeah. So, what's the proper solution? Because now I am confused. Okay. So, I might not. So there is a hundred liters, uh, and the, of course, there is one thing. I made a mistake. A hundred liters of fuel doesn't weigh a hundred kilos, right? When we have a spill of fuel or oil on the ocean, it floats, so it's lighter, right? So. We have 100 liters and we have the emission factor in tons of CO2 per liter. Anya, oh, that's fine. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, now I'm confused. Okay, so times 0 0.0023. Okay, so of course the teacher made a mistake and the proper answer is 0 0.23. Okay. I learned in my studies that I remember the best when the teacher made a mistake. <laughs> so that's one of the strategies, right? Or a nice way to go out of the error. Okay. Uh, I remember we, one of them was tricky, and I don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I pre prepared it a few weeks ago and kind of. Okay. Let's listen to the group two and three. Was it market or location based? Uh, this data, uh, uh, where the depending where the factor is coming, right? <laughs> right? It's market based. We use the factors for fossil fuels uh, from the market, right? Okay. Okay. Group two and three. Uh, we assume the location-based methodology um, mm -hmm. with the national electricity emission factor of Angola. And uh, uh, we calculated the 
39 tons of emissions e and uh, 819 carbon dioxide equivalent. How much? Can you repeat? 819. Of what? Carbon dioxide equivalent. Okay. In tons. Okay. Okay, the other group is, no, not five. group three, uh, five. group five. Which which group is three? Uh, group three, five. Sorry, five. Your group. Where's group five? They left. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fine. I wonder what they will do during the game. <laughs> Okay, so now we have, uh, so yeah, so the answer. But what did you do with the emission factor from Colombia? You did? This is the emission factor. So it's different uh, data, you see? Again. <laughs> Again. Yeah, I was playing around. But here everything is in gigawatts. This is in gigawatts, this is in megawatts. So it's moved by three uh, factors, right? Right? So we, we, we made a consistent um, uh, mistake, but the answer is uh, proper. Yeah. Right? And so what I wanted to show by this is that the emission factors are not always CO2 per something. There are emission factors concerning other uh, greenhouse gases, right? Okay. Oh, Sorry. So and now group... Uh, three and three, six. Three and six. So group six. Okay. The ton of emission CO2 is 619,000 tons of CO2 emission. Okay, and the group uh, six? Uh, three? Uh, three, this is sorry. answer for three calculation, mm -hmm. group three calculation. Group three and the... Okay. <laughs> Wait, we are missing two groups? <laughs> okay, I think they were mixed up with like, which uh, they calculated. So. Ah, okay. Okay, so let's look into the, into the. Is, is this group three? Yeah. So the data was uh, CO two emissions uh, use of purchase electricity, a um, thousand gigawatt hours emission factor, all points six nineteen, which is most likely the Polish one uh, that I used. And the answer, and I was playing too much with the data. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for this. But anyways, we, we had a different, uh, yeah, I was switching countries, actually. Um, I was switching countries. So this is uh, where we have the difference in the emission factor, yeah, right? Factor is... uh, I don't know if I used Colombia, moved to Poland, or used Poland, moved to Colombia. Don't remember. But anyways, your answer is uh, proper because uh, you use the proper emission yeah. factor, which uh, the answer okay. is 619,000, right? <laughs> Sorry for this. <laughs> As you said, they will remember. Yeah, hopefully, or be more confused. Um, but again, you will have a... Um, so such calculations are done typically by uh, environmental specialists, um, engineers, um, when they are in need of this carbon dioxide uh, emission data, right? As a financial institution, you would be rather gathering the data, right? And putting them into a proper tool. And one of the tools was presented yesterday, right? Uh, and today, during the game, we'll be using a tool that is available in form of an Excel file on the GHD protocol website. 
and this is free to use for everyone. And it has these calculations embedded. The Excel file allows you to choose the country. There are emission factors applied for the country already, and you just enter activity data. And at the end of the day, the file provides you with a report, so which is very, uh, very nice. Okay. Anna? Okay, so uh, so we make a break and no. no, okay, okay. So we are uh, kind of uh, using the time uh, a little bit differently than agenda allows. So let's move to the panel right now, and I hand over to Jonas. Okay, good. Okay, um, we will set up, like we need two, three minutes um, to set up. So if you need like to go to the washroom or um, get some water, please do so. Two minutes, three minutes, and we meet here again, and then uh, we will start with the, with the first panel. <laughs>